Ready for the word this morning? Yeah, yeah I'm too. Uh, we're going to talk this morning. Um, so last week we were kind of in a little bit of a, a, a session uh, or section rather of July, kind of the middle of the year. Last week we kind of went back to the beginning of the year, things that the Lord had said to us um, through different guest ministers, and ultimately just grabbing those, grabbing uh, the words that were said to this house and saying, "Okay, what am I doing with the word?" What am I doing with the words that the Lord gave me? And so putting those into place. Now, today I want to, and over really the next two weeks, I want to talk about going forward. Okay, so, you know, it's good to look back, but how many of you know uh, it, it's, it's really important uh, to look forward, right? You ever, you ever had that, like, head down, hit the pole? You know, uh, it, it's important that your eyes are up. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what does it look like to look forward. And really what it does, every day, if you and I are looking forward, every day is about choices, right? Every day is about choices, and, and um, it's our yeses and our noes, right? Uh, in other words, our yeses automatically are saying no to things, and our noes are saying yes to other things, and, and so on and so forth. Maybe sometimes we struggle with saying no, but what the reality is every time we say yes, we're saying no. You know, if you say yes to the Lord or, or to somebody over here, like like uh, just recently, I went over um, uh, on Thursday e- afternoon, evening, uh, went over to, to pull some deer stands off of a deer lease that we no longer have um, and get that done and, and hopefully finish by early Friday morning so I could get back and be home. But when, when I'm over there in a place that I love and a place that I have uh, land, there's, there's a lot, there's always things to do. But we had checked off all of the need to do to, to get done, and uh, I was like, uh, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna go home to be with my family." Now, the, typically, because of this is the, these things were stewing in me, uh, I'd be like, "Oh, you know, I don't get to be over here very much. I'm gonna kind of hang out a little bit." But there was a priority in my heart that I really wanted to be home because I got things done, and I wanted to, I just wanted to be home. But sometimes, because of feeling bad, or maybe because of just you know, hanging out or whatever, I would be like, even though inside I'm getting this draw to go home or to go make sure to get back home with the family, uh, instead it's like, oh, I'm going to hang out and take care of me. And so it's like, I really want to do that, but it's hard for me to say no to, to there. But the reality is if you and I realize that my saying yes is me saying no to them, saying no to my family, and it just makes it a little easier recognizing my yeses and my noes, you know, um, what are you saying no to that you, in your heart, want to say yes to? And just in your, in your tomorrow, like, where are the places that you really want to say yes? It's important that you can say yes. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that we have, you know, it teaches uh, that we have a free, a free will, a free choice. You are free to choose. But that, what that means, too, is that you're responsible for your choice. So we all want to be free to choose, but that just means you're also responsible for your choice. And, and we're kind of in a culture, uh, just especially in the last you know, 15, 20 years, where our choices, we don't feel like we have to be responsible for them. There's forgiveness there's for those choices. There's, you know, I understand that God forgives choices, but your choices, you're responsible for your choices. Your wages, your, there's a wage for your choice. So anyway, we're going to talk this morning um, about, about choices, and this is the, the ultimate choice, I would say, that I really want to hit on this morning is choosing to trust. Choosing to trust. You know you have a choice whether or not to trust the Lord. It's, it's, we, don't, we don't recognize this. Sometimes we get full of fear because of this, this, this. We get this because of this. I don't know what's going on, but maybe I'm hitting it. Um, there's things that are going on, and, and, and it causes us to respond a certain way. And we say, this caused me to do this. Or uh, at our house, this has been something as of late that I'm like, oh, really? Uh, they, they say, you make me so mad. I'm like, oh, they, they can make you, huh? You, you know, when, when you have brothers that are pestering or whatever, uh, you, no one can make you. Uh, okay, I choose to be. Okay, that's your choice. Well, I hate when you say that. Okay? <laughs> your choice. Your choice. No one can make you mad. No one can make you sad. No one can make you afraid. 
The devil can't make you. That's your choice to fear. Your choice to stress. No, it's not the bills that's causing you to stress. It's your choice that's causing you to stress. So you have a, you have a choice. And it's really important that we recognize that we have a choice. That you know, that, 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 that we can be pressed on the outside, but you and I don't have to despair. It's a choice. And, and the thing is, is so many times we don't, we don't want to say that. We want to shift blame. And if we shift blame, then it, it, what we're trying to do is shift responsibility. That's why we like blame. It's because it shifts re- responsibility. Also, what blame does is it, it, it promotes shame somewhere. You know, I was, I was actually just reading a post. Uh, just, I don't know how it happened uh, um, I was actually going to be looking for a little chest of drawers, and uh, the first thing up on my uh, Facebook wall was um, somebody attacking uh, another person uh, pretty maliciously, and I was like, wow, that's great. That's called the shame thrower, the blame thrower. I don't know. I was thinking, man, they're, you, what they're starting to say is they're taking no responsibility for whatever just happened. Um, Man, scary, scary place to be. But I'll tell you, when you're trying to pass blame on somebody, it's probably because there's some pretty shameful things on your on your part that you're not willing to, right? I mean, it's kind of like the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. We're going to get into the word here in just a moment. Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve. It's this woman you gave me, right? Blaming God. It's your fault. It's her fault. And the Lord's like, nah. Nah. Nope. Matter of fact, I'm going to deal with you, Adam. And I'm going to deal with you, Eve. And I'm going to deal with you, serpent. Did you know that? Did you know that God's going to deal with you according to you? And he's going to deal with them according to them. So you don't have to take on the care of trying to play God and making sure that they're shamed. And that they're blamed. God will take care of them. What happens when we step into that place, we stand in that place of God, and it's really dangerous. So, anyway, uh, that's just, uh, that's just uh, that was free. So here, let's uh, turn uh, to Psalms 18, verse 30. Psalms 18, verse 30. This is a good highlighted, highlighted scripture. It probably hasn't been highlighted in your Bible yet, but it would be good to put it in circle it and mark it and fold that page. How many of you know sometimes having a page folded helps you some on days? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Maybe you got some post-it notes in your Bible where, you're, where it's something that the Lord said to you before and you maybe are just doing the plop and flop, right? You know, that morning it's like, I don't know where, I, I don't even know where to start. I know we have Bible reading and all that kind of stuff, but man, maybe you're behind, okay? Well, great. You can plop and flop and all of a sudden it hits on that note page that has those extra three post-it notes or that folded page and you're like, oh, okay, guess it fell open to here. Well, this would be a good one to have it fall on and it's in Psalms 18 verse 30 and we put it up there. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven and he is a shield to all those who trust him. I really want to hit on this. The word of the Lord is proven. And we're talking this morning about the choice to trust. The word of the Lord is proven. Do you, and I believe that the word of the Lord is proven. His word is true. His word is the beginning. It's been true in the end. He sees from the beginning. uh, He sees the end. So what he states, he sees a whole lot bigger than what we see just in our moment. Now, again, hang with me this morning because I want to, I want to, um, really identify, uh, really get to the root of how you and I can choose to trust, okay? So uh, if you'll see, if you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 22, 34 through 40, and I I mentioned this early on in the announcements, but self-preservation is probably one of the sneakiest, most destructive spirits that has gotten into the body of Christ, now, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6 that uh, at the latter portion, he says, you know, you're worried about what you're going to eat. You're going to worry about what you're going to drink. You're worried about this. And he says, uh, but I clothe the lilies of the field. I feed the birds of the air. He said, 
Uh, nothing is clothed like this, even Solomon in all of his splendor. He said, this is what the Gentiles seek after. What is he saying? He's saying, those who have no covenant with me seek after these things. And so this is why I say it is natural for a non-believer, a non-child of God, to be looking for their own self-provision. That is normal. It is natural. But when you get born again, you get bought with a price and you're no longer your own, but you are God's. So you become a child of God. And we know how to take care of our children, but we don't think God takes care of his. David said, not once have I seen the righteous forsaken. The Lord tells us, we looked at this on Wednesday in Matthew chapter 7. He says, if you ask for uh, bread, you, you know how to give these. If your child asks for bread, are you going to give him a stone? or No, you're going to give him bread. You're going to take care of him. Well, it's time that we settle that the Lord is good at taking care of us. Because we're talking about to making a choice to choose to trust. Amen. It's time that we settle that the Lord is good at taking care of me. Amen. Making a choice and to trust that the Lord is taking care of me. The Lord is going to take care of me. Lord, I'm, and, and we're going to look at looking to Him and what He has to say about the moment when, when something comes, maybe a bill comes, maybe, uh, maybe uh, a job, uh, you lose the, a, a job, or maybe you thought this was going to go this way, and, and you thought you signed up for this contract, or you, you got this big, this big job, and now all of a sudden it fell through. Now what? You know, the Lord is going to take care of you. You could settle that in your heart. You could say, I'm going to choose to trust the Lord. Amen. I'm going to choose to trust the Lord that he saw this coming. Do you know the Lord saw it coming, whatever you just all of a sudden hit you? Did you know he saw it coming way before it got to you? Do you know that he made a way before you ever knew that you needed to have a way? I'm going to choose to trust. I'm going to choose to rest. I'm going to choose to follow what he says, and I'm going to make that choice. I'm not going to choose distress. I'm not going to choose. I'm going to choose to look at what he says and what he's saying. I'm going to ask the Lord, what do you say here? Again, let's go here, Matthew chapter 22, 34 through 40. It says, when the Pharisees said, um, basically he signed them to gather them together. Verse 35, let's jump to 35. One of the lawyers asked the question saying, teacher, what is the greatest commandment of the law? Saying, hey, what? ask them this question, next verse, sorry. What is the greatest commandment? So this is this, this portion there Jesus is hanging out with these guys that are really not for him. And they say, so, hey, what's the great, trying to stump them, trying to catch them. And they said, so what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus says this. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then he goes on to say, and this is the first and the great commandment. And then he goes, the second is like unto it. And, you know, we like to, a lot of times, talk about loving people. We know what does love look like. It looks like a choice. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, all of 1 Corinthians 13, when you look at love is patience, did you know that's a choice? Like every one of the attributes of love is a choice. It's you choose it. You, you choose it. It's there, but you got to choose it. It's a fruit of the Spirit, but you got to choose it. It's there, but you still got to choose it and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to operate in that today. I'm going to operate in that today. Well, yeah, well, they, were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they did this to me, so now that means I can do that. Well, that's, it's a choice. Like somebody does, it's not like, well, this happened, so now that makes me do this. No, it's your choice. And so, but so many times we jump past the first to go to number two and three and four. We want to keep on moving down. But what does it look like to love the Lord? It looks like, it looks like giving him choice. In other words, to lead your life. If you love the Lord, he has the right, he has the choice to tell you where to go, where to work. Let me say this one, we're not liking this that much. What to do with your money? Like what if the Lord tells you to give it all away? Well, he would never do that. No, he never told the rich young ruler that at all, who he trusted in his money. And then he never, and he, he never ran after him and said, okay, hold on, let me give you another deal. That was maybe a little extreme. He probably never did that. Gee, that was, gee, was that Jesus? Was that in red? That was, that was in red. Yep. See, 
if money has too big of a hold on you, when it becomes God and money tells you what to do, well, then you can't follow him. You can't follow him when you're following dollars. You can't follow him when you're following uh, just all the symptoms, uh, wherever it might be. Again, love gives the choice. Do I love the Lord? Well, giving him a choice uh, would start with this. When I truly love the Lord, it looks like me inquiring of him about, if you love your wife, do you just do everything without including her? Or do you say, hey, honey, what do you think about, even if you might have a good prompting, how many of you know, you, when you love someone, you include them in your steps forward? Is that true? Yes. Yeah. It's going to happen today um, where someone's going to say, hey, where do you want to go out to eat? And they're going to say, I don't know. But you know what? Because you love them, you check every single time. All right, so we see this. Um, I want to go to, to Proverbs chapter uh, 14, verse 12. Could it be that there is a way that we think is right, but it's not right? Like, in other words, that we, we, when we just decide we're going we're gonna to do this, and we're going to do this, we're going to go to such and such a city, we're going to do this, we're going to go there, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, without even checking in with our heart and asking the Lord, Lord, what do you say about this? Should, I, should, should we go on that vacation? Could I tell you that just because you went on vacation last year doesn't mean you're supposed to go on it this year? Yeah, well, they are, and they went to the beach. Okay. Where are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to be doing? Who's leading your life? I'm not saying that vacation is bad by any means. Maybe you're supposed to go on three this year. Amen. And the Lord will provide. But whose life is this life? Whose is it? Again, we're talking about choosing to trust. Whose life? He hold, we'll, we'll give it, we're going to say we're going to trust you with our eternity, but we won't trust you with this? Boy, we're, we're, we're missing it here. If we're going to move forward, it's great to look back, but how about let's moving forward and let's, let's not have to take a left and a right, but let's just move forward. Let's trust the Lord. Trust in the Lord will cause something that's amazing to take place in your heart. And that's something that you can't, money can't provide. And that's something called contentment. Because God, he's got you. The one who knew the end from the beginning, he's got you. Let's keep going here. Uh, Proverbs 14, uh, 12. It says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of the way is death. How many of you like to just choose death? Nope. Everybody's trying to choose right. Is that correct? I mean, I, I think that's what we try to choose. We try to choose what's the best way. Matter of fact, from the very beginning, that's what we're trying to choose, and this is why we got to know. Yeah. We got to know. We we look at all of the all of the you know the the factors, and we say we weigh them, and we say, yep, this is the right one. But could it be that what I see here might be different than what the Lord directs? What I think here. Could it, could it be that there's principles in the word and there's words and, and there's spiritual laws that don't make sense to natural? Like there's one who gives more and yet increases, and yet there's one who withholds more. This is Proverbs, more than, than, he, than he should, and yet he leads to poverty. I'm quoting scripture here. Yeah, it doesn't make sense that you could give in, instead of save, 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 and yet you could save and you lead to more, and then you could save, 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 and yet it leads to less, less, less. Let's keep going here. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. I want you to see this. There's a, there's a statement, and we're going to take a moment here this morning to look. Um, how many of you, we, we want wisdom, don't we? Okay. Um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. It says, but you must not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. So many times we, we, we go to Genesis chapter 3, where when the serpent talks, right? Not where Jesus talked. But he gives a very clear direction not to eat of the tree. Right here. He says, you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you do, you're going to surely die. What does that mean? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. It means not to eat from it. 
It, does, it means we probably shouldn't go entertain it. Okay, I, I just wanted to establish that piece right there. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I love this, how the Lord give, he gives us a choice. Remember, again, we're talking about loving the Lord and choosing to trust. If you love the Lord, you, you give him a choice. Here's the cool thing is, when the Lord gives you a choice, he tells you what the best choice is. So he gives you a choice, and then he tells you what the best choice is. So you see here in the garden, he said, hey, I've given you the tree of life, and here's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of this tree. You'll die if you eat of this tree. Don't do this one. Do this one, all right? Here we are now in Deuteronomy, and, and there's a declaration to the people of, people of God, the children of Israel, and he says uh, right before this, and here's like kind of the culmination or resummarization of what he, the preceding verses. He says, I call heaven to earth to witness today, okay? And he said, uh, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, choose life. So this is uh, Moses talking to the people of God, telling them what to choose, yeah, he's going to give you a choice. It's your choice. Freedom of choice, what comes with that is responsibility of choice. You get what you choose. Well, I wanted vanilla. Well, then you should have chose vanilla. Well, well, why did you choose chocolate? Anybody ever had that? The kid chooses chocolate, and now he wants vanilla. He wanted both. Or like, Sorry, I'm not going back. We're not going back to change out your ice cream cone, bud. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh. All right, Luke chapter 10. Let's get here. Luke 10, 38. So we're, we're just establishing that, that sometimes we see short-sighted. Okay, most of the time we see short-sighted compared to what the Lord says. We need, if we're going to love the Lord with all of our heart, it starts with uh, understanding that love gives choice, gives God the choice and the right to direct your life. Okay, it, But that's your choice. He goes on and says this. Uh, this is the story of Mary and Martha. Now... <clears throat> Uh, this is a really key point here. It says, Now it happened when they, went, when they went, he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him, uh, him into her house. So we're at Martha's house. We're not at Mary's house. Is that clear? I think we read over that a lot of times. If I come to your house, whose responsibility is the house? Probably yours. Is it your daughter's? No. Is it your son's? No, but if, there, if, if, if your daughter's in the house, it wouldn't be kind of nice if she kind of helped too, right? Or your sister or your brother. But whose house is this? Martha's house. So what happens in this house is Martha's responsibility. Is this correct? Let me say it this way. It's going to go on Martha's name as a homemaker, as a... There, there, there's pressure here to make a decision on what to do in the moment. And so many times we allow pressure to tell us what we're doing uh, instead of checking with the Lord what we should be doing. Okay, let's keep going here. So we went into this house, Martha's house, and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So this tells me this, they both sat at Jesus' feet. It wasn't like Jesus came in and Martha's in the kitchen and, and Mary ignored her. No, they both were sitting. But what happened was, uh, what happened was, this is my house and he's in my house and I, and I don't have anything for him. Uh, I need to get up and make something available. I have to, I have to, I have to. Pressure. So many times, again, we're talking about choosing to trust. So many times there's pressure. How many of you, the Bible tells us to be led by pressure? No? There's pressure that's causing one to choose what they don't want. Matter of fact, Martha is upset that Mary is getting what she wants. Martha wanted to sit at Jesus' feet. She's actually upset with, with Mary, and she's not only upset with Mary, she's upset with Jesus and doesn't believe that Jesus cares. That next verse tells us this. Martha was distracted, uh, uh, and she said, Lord, do you not care? Wow. Like, when there's pressure that causes us to make a decision that we don't want to make, and we make this decision that we don't want to make because of pressure, not because of what the Lord directed, but because of pressure, 
When the Lord was like, I'm speaking here, and yet you move because of pressure, not because of my word, not because, listen, I love you and I'm here, and, and I guarantee you, Martha, in, in a year and a half from now, she was probably wishing she would have spent a little bit more time at that feet that day. Well, I got to get here. Let me, I'm just, we just came out of a family series. We didn't talk much about time, about your yes and no's, but uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't think you're ever going to move forward and wish you would have spent a little more time at that job or blah, 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 or that because I need to have a little bit more for this and a little bit more for that. And I had to make sure and go make sure that, that this was washed off and that was clean and, and the kids are at the house, and, but you're too busy washing the front porch all the time. You wash the front porch. Now, I'm not saying you can't have a clean front porch, but let's get the kids out there and help you wash the front porch or let's... Forget the front porch, and let's go hang out and eat some Doritos or something. Yeah. Let's crack open a watermelon. Let's do some choices. Well, if I don't do that, then I have to do that, because if, if I don't do that, who's going to do it? You don't have to do anything. Well, if, if I don't, then who will? I don't know. But maybe if you didn't do that, maybe you would have be faced with a choice of saying, uh, uh, wait a minute hey, you need to train your children to wipe their feet. You need to train your children. Instead of you being the mom or the dad that does everything for them, and they turn 28, 29, and they don't know how to do a dang thing. They should know how to wash their clothes and wipe a table and all of these kind of things. It's, it's true. But you were doing it because of pressure. Because if I don't, then who will? We will. When it gets bad enough. <laughs> All right. I don't know how we got off on that. That wasn't the part of this. <sighs> Jesus answered. You know, sometimes we don't tell the truth up here. We want to just hear another good word. But, like, we're just going to go back to going back to getting the word, the truth. This is what the whole day today is really just about telling the truth. We're, we're getting there. All right. And Jesus answered, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things. So it wasn't at all. It was many things that were going on in her side that caused her many things. A lot of times there's many things that are going on that cause us to leave what we really want. And we've talked ourselves out of because of this, because of this, because of this. And I love how Jesus just ends it and says, Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. That's the end of it. We don't know if Martha came back and was sat at Jesus' feet. She might have stayed in the kitchen. She might have got offended with Jesus right there. Where, where else do you see Martha? Do you see her again? I don't know. This is it. This is where Martha. We did, he just moves on. He just moves on. It's like you got a choice. He just leaves it. the choice with Martha. He just leaves it with her. God just leaves a choice with you. This is how God works. He just leaves a choice with you. A tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a tree. He just leaves it with him? Like, you're just going to walk away and just leave me with the choice. Yeah, you wanted free choice. You got free choice. What are you going to do? Are you going to choose what you really want? Or are you going to choose what you feel pressured to choose? Let's keep on going. We're talking about choosing to trust this morning. So when, when we make a choice, so many times we're making a choice, and we're trying to make this choice based on wisdom. Right? How many of you would like to make a choice based on wisdom? Or let me say it this way. We make a choice so many times with good information. Deductive reasoning. If you have, a, let's say you have a, an investment account and you go to a, a 401k manager. Okay? I got Edward Jones sitting over here. Justin, uh, he, is a, he is actually manages my, uh, my retirement account, which I just started a couple of years ago. Praise the Lord. Right? I'm young. So uh, I'm like, all right, I've never had one of those before. I'm pretty young, but I ain't a spring chicken like I was before when I should have probably done this. Right? And so um, I'm talking to Justin and his wisdom for where should I put my money? And he says, well, let me tell you this like this and this like this and this like this. But I would probably put it here. There's this high risk and then there's this low risk. Do you think you, I would think, and so you're trying to manage based on all the information that you have, which is so limited because you can't see tomorrow. 
You know what I'm talking about? And so we try to make the decision that's best based on the information that we have. And if we're going to make a really good decision, then we're going to want to do a little more, maybe on this fund, we want to do a little more re, come on, research or me search, a little Google. Like I invested in this and it crashed. What does somebody else say of what it's going to be in this year? Oh, it's going to be up. Oh, it's going to be. We try to do a little more research so we can make the right decision. Okay? Now, we're, we're hanging in there. I, I want to talk again. I'm talking tonight or to this morning about choosing to trust. Okay? Man, I was, we're always looking for wisdom. We're always looking to make the right decision. But here it says this. Now, I want to, get, I want to go to Proverbs chapter 3, uh, 5 and 6, and we quote this all the time. Trust in the Lord. With all of your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Okay? Isn't that right? Um, but we never really roll to seven. Okay? And as much as we're looking for wisdom, and as much as we talk about wisdom, let, let me go here for wisdom. Okay, don't go to verse seven. But let's, let's, let's just talk a little bit about wisdom this morning. Let's talk about wisdom starting in um, Proverbs 3, 13 through 18. Okay, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain is better than fine gold. Wisdom, she is better than precious rubies and all the things that you desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in wisdom's right hand. In her left hand is riches and honor. We've heard about wisdom. Wisdom provides for you. Wisdom, a, a house is built. Her ways are pleasant. Wisdom's paths, verse 17, are filled with peace. Wisdom's path, she is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all those who retain her. Wisdom is incredible. Wisdom, by wisdom, God, verse 19, he founded the earth and he established the heavens by this understanding, by his knowledge, and the depths were broken up and the clouds dropped down the dew. Wisdom did these things. We need wisdom. How many of you want some wisdom? Yeah, I want some wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom does these things, but what is wisdom? What's wisdom? Does all these things, but do you know there's a, there's a passage that says this is wisdom? You know what wisdom is? It's to hate evil. That's what wisdom is. And here's our problem right now. We're making our own choices so much, and we're choosing what God calls evil, and we're calling it good. And we want wisdom, and we can't see the forest through the trees so often because we don't even know what wisdom is. We just think it's more information and better, uh, a complete picture so we can decide. So we can decide. We want to have, have, enough, have enough so what? We can decide. So we can decide. This is not new. This is why the tree was so tempting. Because it's the knowledge of good and evil. So you know what? You can decide. But what is God's ways? What is his word? It's proven. It's true. You don't need to know, but here's the thing. This is, let's go here. Let's see, see where it says this. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. To fear the Lord... The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But to fear the Lord, if you're going to, the very roots of wisdom, the way is to fear the Lord. But if I'm going to fear the Lord, I'm going to have to hate evil. That's where it all starts. It all starts by you and I saying or agreeing or hating what God hates and loving what God loves. This is where it all starts. Hating what God hates and loving what God loves. I'm just going to throw out some different terms uh, today, and it's going to cause a whole lot of mixed emotions. And if this is on YouTube, so I, I might get some bad letters, okay? Because it is on YouTube. I'm going to throw out some, some words. It's going to cause some mixed emotions, some things that God is very clear about what he calls evil, 
But we have mixed it and, and said, mm, it's not that bad. Okay? Here's one. Sleeping with the opposite sex before you're married. Anybody in here not married? You're shacking? What does the Bible say about that? Because what do you say about that? It's not that it's not that bad, okay? It's not that bad. How about profanity? I don't say mother. I just listen to mother a couple times. It only had two mother. It's not. It's not that bad. So as I entertain not that bad, you might have someone you really love who is battling with not that bad. And so because you love them, you too have joined the bandwagon of. And so what you just did is you forfeited wisdom. Or, let me say this, you forfeited trust. If you don't, if you don't hate what God hates, if you don't fear the Lord and hate evil, you will never be able to rest and trust in the Lord. It's, this is where it all starts. If what God says about evil, this is where wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But wisdom, or, or the fear of the Lord is this, to hate evil. You know what's evil? This is what it says. I want you to see, this is what God calls evil. Pride. Arrogance. Let me say it this way. I know. You know God hates that? Did you know that's what happened, and that's what the very beginning was? Is the, the very beginning was, I know. That's a, that's a powerful statement. You'll never be able to choose to trust as long as you know. Because you'll trust him here, but you're really not trusting him. You're trusting you. You're not trusting him. Think about this. When, when, when he says, uh, I, I could be concerning healing it could be concerning it, based on what you could see happening you'll trust this is where it all begins allowing what the lord calls evil for you to come into agreement and say this is evil like at what point does the church look different than the world again this is again this is not a good like oh yeah pat me on the back pastor message this is like the lord saying we need to get some things straightened back out here because we're forfeiting wisdom by which I'm building my church, by which I want to see my children's houses furnished and have them have long life and peace. And I want to, I want to add these things to them. But guess what? They're, they're robbed and they're, they're losing their mind at, at 65 years old when they're supposed to be imparting wisdom to the next generation. But they've lost it because, because they forfeited Wisdom because of forfeiting what I've called good and what I've called evil. And they're now looking at it based upon themselves and saying, well, this is, this is what I think. Yeah. Come on. Amen. What did God say? Again, we're talking going back all the way to the roots. Loving the Lord your God. Well, how do you love the Lord? What do you say, Lord? What do you say? That's, that's, the, that's the root of love. Lord, what do you say? What do you say, Lord? For my children. Well, everyone else is doing it, and they're going to not. What do you say? Lord, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say concerning this? Okay, this is going back to that beginning, that beginning choice. Uh, for the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It, 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 again, Proverbs 8, 13. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. Do you hate perverse speech? Do you hate what puts perverted twisted is saying what God doesn't say? Like it's it's saying the opposite of what God hates that. Because you're playing you're playing God. I think I think sometimes we we read over some of the things that the Lord says like it doesn't really matter. 
It's not that important. Here, here's one that we hit a few weeks ago. Uh, forgive or I can't forgive you. There's one. We don't want to hear about that one. But let me, let's just let's unpack that for a little bit. Just a moment. Forgive or I can't forgive you. When you're unwilling to yield what the word of the Lord is, you are now king. When I'm unwilling to yield to what the Lord says, I become king of my own life, my own heart. Well, I don't know if we realize this or not, but because we're so in such a culture of democracy and diplomacy and and republic and there's a there's one king and it's either it's either you're going to come in line with that king and serve him or you're going to serve yourself and the bible tells us that when we serve ourselves we actually oppose the lord when i when you what you uh, you become an enemy of the lord isn't that what happened with lucifer he became an enemy of the Lord. He opposed him because of what he thought. Because of what he thought, what he was, what he was entitled to. It, what God says matters. And if God says something and he says to do something, you have a choice to do it or not to do it. You can choose. Like you think about that when you... When you've been hurt really bad, when you've been hurt really bad, that's when it's hard to choose. That's when it's hard to choose, harder to choose. But let me tell you, it's still your choice. It might be hard, but it's still your choice. What makes it easier is when you and I settle in our hearts that God's way is the best way. I don't have to look at hurt. I don't have to look at history. I don't have to look at any of all these things of evidence of why it's hard. All I have to do is settle in my heart that God's ways are proven and what he says is for my good. It'll cause me to have long days. It'll cause me to have peace in my house. It'll, it's better than fine gold. It's better than all. What do you say? You know, when you come into a place where things are going on and you're at a place of decision or there's turmoil in your life, you're going to have to go back and say, Lord, are you saying something that I'm, that I'm not following? Are you saying something? Because you can be in a storm and the, the storm doesn't have to be in you. You can be in a storm and you can be pressed and you can be, per- but you trust in the Lord. Yeah. But your trust is in the Lord. Yeah. Let's keep going here. Let's go to Proverbs 3, 5. Uh, and we're going to go through to verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. So when you acknowledge him, when you ask the Lord for a choice, like where do you want, do you think, will he, will he show you which way to walk? When you trust in the Lord with all of your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit, this, this translation says. NIV, I have NKG, JV on all of this, but in all your ways, submit to him. All your ways, come, Lord, I'm, I'm coming under what your way, and he, guess what he'll do? He'll direct you in the way you're supposed to go. The Lord will always direct you. Put, I don't know if you can do that, but um, yeah. Anyway, let me read out of the New King James. It says it this way, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall, not he might, he shall direct you your path. The next verse says this, but don't be wise in your own eyes. So when the Lord directs you, he says, don't trust here in your understanding, but trust in your heart and he'll direct you. But that doesn't seem very good to me. When the Lord says something in his word, when the Lord speaks to you clearly in your heart, in agreement with his word, but mm, I wouldn't do it that way. You need to fear the Lord and depart from evil. He says, fear the Lord. You know what he calls evil? The fact that you would say in your own eyes is right above 
what he said in his word. That's evil. It's evil when you and I say what I think is above what he said. You know what he said? Fear the Lord and run from evil. And we wonder, we wonder why sometimes things are going on. Can I tell you? We're partnering with evil far too much in our homes. Dude, what perverse language? Evil. What God calls evil, we're calling good. We're calling not that bad. We're standing at the tree and entertaining the tree of good and evil. Until it becomes not that bad, and now we partake of it. I'm just, this is just a call, ultimately, to ask yourself the question, myself the question, the choices that I'm making to sit down and watch things, or to do certain things, or to trust certain things, like whatever it might be, I need to ask the Lord, are you in this? Or am I making my own choices here? Am I, am I leading my own life? If I don't trust what he calls evil and I don't call it evil, I will never be able to trust him for my good. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I want to I read this uh, passage right here. Um, and I'll, I'll, These are kind of my, closing, my closing verses. This is where uh, we, we, we maybe have heard this before, but I, I see something different in it. Matthew chapter 6, 22 through 24. Before I jump there, I'm going to jump to Proverbs uh, chapter 6. You know, there's a passage that says there's, there's a few things the Lord hates. There's even one that's detestable. He starts with the things that he hates. He says, a proud look. Now, a proud look. Let me just take a moment there on a proud look. What's a proud look? Is that a proud look? Could a proud look just simply be like this? I'm going to do that. Could a proud look just simply be, I got the information, and now my look is now causing a proud look. A proud look is that my eyes saw, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him. Right? And he'll make your path straight. But then he says, do not be wise in your own eyes. My eyes, so many times, I look at the situation and I got a proud look. You know what that is? A look where I saw some information and I, what I, not only what I want, but what I saw is now what's directing my days, what's directing my path. How I think, how I see, and I, I forfeit, and I, I let go of, what, Lord, what do you say? God hates a proud look. When I looked to the tree and I saw that the tree was good to be for, who said it was good for fruit? The Lord never said it was good to be enabled. He never said any of that, but they had a proud look. That look of that tree, when I saw that tree and I saw that it was able to do this and I saw it was able to do that, that's a proud look. The proud look is not just walking with swag and acting like you're the hot stuff. A proud look is when you assess something with your eyes and that your eyes are what makes you make a decision above what God said. God hates that. Matter of fact, God hates a lot of things and you know what? You and I should be hating a lot of things. No, we, we love. Don't you know? We love. We love. That's what the, we, we do. We love. We're Christians. We love. No, Christians are supposed to hate evil. Hate evil. You know what you should hate? You should hate lying. Any deception, stealing on the job, that was for somebody. Stealing on the job, it's little. You should hate it. As long as you don't hate it, what you do is you endorse it and you are standing and opposing the Lord and you will not be able to position yourself in trusting Him for His promises. Because you don't believe it's evil. So why do you think you're going to believe he's good? Or that he can? You don't believe it. You're just got fire insurance. These are real decisions to have to make. Who's Lord of my life? Who directs my days? 
Do I, am I in this day and in this age, you know, will I find faith on the earth when I return? Faith is coming under the word of God. You can't have faith to have a, a house or a car or to be blessed and to be healed and not have faith to come under what he calls evil and what he calls good. We're deceiving ourselves. The foundation of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So you want to break it down, you're going to have to see those places of evil in your life, in my life, and we're going to have to say this, I hate you. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. You're going to have to hate, hate. You know the answer to addiction of porn? You're going to have to hate it. Oh, once an addict out? No, no, no. You can hate it. You can hate it. You can hate how the evil brings death. It kills families. Destroys marriages. Identities. You've got to hate it. It's time we start hating evil again. Because if we hate evil, what happens is fear of the Lord takes place. A reverential awe. Uh, my God. Now when he says that I will supply my, your needs according to my riches, you believe him. You can rest in that because of what he said. You, you positioned your life under his word. And under his word, he gives grace to the humble. You position yourself in the floor where, in the the flow where you can rest. You can't rest as long as you are making your own call. As long as you're trying to be self-sufficient. In Matthew chapter 6, there's a parallel passage in, in Luke. But this is the, the statement. It's, it's uh, right before no one can serve two masters. But we're going to read this, this passage. It says, the eye, or the way you see, is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eyes are bad, that word bad is evil. If your eyes are evil, he says this, your whole body will be filled with darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Here's what he's talking about next verse. Now no one can serve two masters. You'll either hate one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. This translation right here, mammon. It's not money. It's mammon. And so many times we translate it God and money. But mammon is, was a God that would tell you what you can do or what you can't do. He says, as long as you look and your eyes are filled with in such a way, if it's good, you're going to be filled with light. In other words, you choose what God says. It's going to be filled with light. But if it's evil, where you and I look to ourselves, we look to our own way, he said, your whole life will be filled with darkness. There's a lot of darkness and a lot of depression, a lot of uh, oppression on the people of God because when pressure comes, Darkness comes. Why? Because we're living in such a way where we're not surrendered to a master. We're living in such a way where we're money and self-provision. Self-sufficiency is what tells us what we can and can't do. And that's evil. Self-sufficiency, self-assessing, a proud look is telling us what we can sit our eyes and our families down on the couch and put on and, and plaster through the airwaves of our home. It's darkness. What's supposed to be directing our life is not what you can do because you can do it. What's supposed to be directing your life is the master, is the Lord. In that place, when we look and we say, Lord, is there any place that's unpleasing to you? In that place, God can move. In that place, your heart can, can rest because you're trusting in the Lord with all of your heart and you're not leaning to whatever you think. And when he comes to your heart and he says, I want you to lay this down or I'm calling this evil and this is bad, it's not good for you, then don't, then don't be wise in your own eyes. But remember to fear the Lord and run from evil. If the Lord calls it evil, if the Lord calls it evil, it's evil and we got to settle that in our hearts. If we can, 
we can trust. If we can, we won't have to serve this, this mammon master that tells me what I can and can't do and causes me to be self-sufficient and independent and apart from God. Parallel passages in Luke chapter 33, verse 30 through 36. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but he puts it on a lampstand that those who come in may see the light. The The lamp of the body is the eye. In other words, say it this way. If you want light in your home, if you want light in your tomorrow, when the Lord lights the lamp of your heart, the Bible says the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. When the Lord lights your heart, when you trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding and the Lord lights your heart and you put it under a basket ah. you can lie to your heart but your heart won't lie to you when you put it under a basket your home will be dark when the Lord lights your heart and illuminates to you what you know you should do when you, but you decide to put it under a basket the home will remain dark so what he's saying here. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when your eye is bad or evil, your body also is full of darkness. When you choose and you, when your eye says evil is good, therefore take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Sometimes we think we're walking in the light because we've been illuminated, but it's under a bushel. We'll say it this way. We quote this one all the time. Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving yourselves. This is the call this morning to trusting the Lord. Trusting in the Lord and choosing to trust starts with choosing to trust God's word as being proven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You're going to have to come into agreement in your life and my life. What he calls evil, you got to call evil. If you're unwilling to do that, you and I, our whole body, our whole lives, our whole plan is filled with bad or darkness or the right translation there would be filled with evil. Filled with evil. You want evil in your home? I don't. You don't. We don't. So what do you do to get rid of evil? You call evil evil, and you call good good. According to who? According to the Lord. According to his word. And wherever I see evil in my life, I hate it. I hate evil. Evil, you know where he starts with evil? A proud look. A self-assess of what my life, I do what I want with my life, I do what I want with my money, what I do, we're training our kids, what are you going to do with your life? Where are you going to go to college? What are you going to do, Braden? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Whatever you want. Yeah, that's what you want to do, whatever you want. You don't know that you were created. You don't know that God formed you, made you, and placed you here on this earth with a call. He absolutely did. And whether you answer that call or not, it's calling. God doesn't change his mind. You have a free choice. And with that choice comes responsibility. God loves you. He loves you. So he gave you a choice. God, I love you. So I'm giving you the choice to direct my life, to lead me. Lord, is this right? Is this the girl for me? Is this the job for me? Lord, is this? You'll find that he'll lead you everywhere you go. He cares about the smallest detail. And guess what? You'll know the Lord. And then you, when you walk out, we're talking about preaching Jesus, everyone, everywhere, every day. When you walk out, you're going to recognize that still small voice. You're going to yield to it. 
because you've been practicing yielding not to your own understanding, but to Him all those days. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Choosing to trust starts starts with the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is this, to hate evil. There's a heavier message this morning. But I believe it's because of this. The Lord is gracious and He's merciful. And He knows when there's evil in our midst. And when I was going back over this year, 2024, it's a year of an open door. But an open door isn't always for your good. If you don't close the door, you really will wish you would have. And so I just believe that this was a message about the open door. There's some doors that need to be closed. And the way you close the door is you say with your mouth what God says concerning the evil. No more. So with our eyes, our eyes closed, our, just our head bowed, I just want to get quiet before the Lord this morning. You know, it's great to hear a message, but it's more important to do some business before we go. Before you get in the car, you know that the Lord was talking to you about. You know where, where inside the Lord it was dealing with some places where the doors have been opened. And the Lord would say, close the door. Close the door. I'm setting before you life and blessing. Choose life. Close that door. It looks like this. Lord, this is repentance. It's not tears. It's a choice to say I've been walking in this way. I haven't hated what you've hated. But Lord, I call that evil. And I say I hate evil. I hate evil. In the name of Jesus, I walk free from evil. In the name of Jesus, I choose life and I come into agreement with what you say, Lord. Freedom in my life to choose your way. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says if you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, to wash you clean. I just had said that sense in my heart this morning that there's just that, that washing, that cleansing that needs to take place. And the Bible that says it that simple. When you confess that, when you say that, when you declare with your mouth what, what God says, you come into agreement. He washes you, He'll cleanse you, and you can today not only have repented but you can walk free from all guilt and condemnation and walk free without the the chains of a history but a a fresh start in the name of Jesus so if that if that's where where you're at this morning you just want to walk free that I want you to lift both hands right where you're at just say father thank you for letting me walk free today Thank you for letting me walk free. All those places that, uh, that, that you were talking to me about. Lord, I've, I confessed it to you. Did you? I confessed it to you. Now wash me today. Cleanse me today from all unrighteousness. And thank you that to my tomorrow, you've given to me a free choice. And I choose to follow you. I choose your way, not my own. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, praise the Lord. If you're here, let's go ahead, hon. Come on up. Um, I just heard this, so I believe it'll be for someone. Um, 
If you're following along in our daily Bible reading, we actually were just here, but this is 1 Corinthians 6. And all what he was talking about this morning, if you have made Jesus not just your Savior, but your Lord, then the Bible tells us this, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have received from God, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. So, you know, we're called to do something with our bodies. You know, your body, I'm not talking about your spirit. I'm talking about your body can glorify God. Why? Because it's not yours, it's his. And if I remember that there was a price paid for my body then I can say, Lord, this body, everything I do, everywhere I go, that this body would model you, that it would preach Jesus to others. And you know what? When you have that tender heart and you have that desire, I'm not saying you're not going to mess up. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying when you have that tender heart that your body is to be used to please him, those things will just fall off. And then Romans 8. So, you know, if that was you this morning, this is, that's a great passage. I love Romans 8. It's probably one of my top passages. But it just talks about life in the spirit. And it tells us this, that, um, sorry, I'm going to see where. Um, you, this is verse, verse 9, Romans 8, 9. You, however, are controlled not by the flesh, but by the spirit. And I just heard that so strong. Some of you have been trying to do it in your flesh. But you know, you're not to be dominated and controlled by your flesh. When you made Jesus the Lord of your life, your flesh is to no longer dominate you. Your spirit is to be the one who dominates you. And so I just heard for some of you, for those things, um, those things like he talked about that you, you do have to say that's evil. And you do have to flee from that. But, you know, you can walk according to the Spirit and that nature of the Spirit, that fruit of the Spirit. And it's just simply saying, you know, you can walk around and you can say, thank you, Lord. I'm not dominated by my flesh today. Flesh, you're not going to dominate me. Spirit, you're going to rule me today. In my interactions with my family, in my interactions with coworkers, in temptations and things, Spirit, you're going to dominate me today. And we talked about this, and we've talked about it in kids' class, but it's very simple. You're a three-part being. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. And if you want the spirit to dominate, you just feed it. What dominates you is what you're feeding. So if you want the spirit to dominate you, then let the word dominate you. Fill up on the word. Fill up on what the word, like what he talked about. Watch what's coming into the airwaves of your home what you're allowing in. And because here's the thing, every breath, he's talked about this, and the word tells us this, every breath carries the spirit. So whatever kind of music, whatever kind of stuff that you're feeding on, behind all of that is a spirit. And guess what? There's only two kinds of spirits. Those who serve the Lord and those who don't. That's good and that's evil. Amen. So good. So good. Thank you. Well, praise the Lord. When you read this, let it change you. Let it change you. By no way do I have this figured out, but we're changed as we behold as in a mirror from one degree of goodness to the next degree like him into his very same image. Let it change you. When he talks to you, and this is why uh, my conviction uh, uh, is not to be preached on you. Evil truth is to be preached. But the Holy Spirit's going to talk to you right where you're at, and He's going to take you, and He's going to change you from one degree to the next to the next. Let it work. Go to work on me today as I look in here. Go to work at me. Let me walk according to the Spirit. Romans chapter 8. You see that. Where's that place? Let me walk that way. And guess what? You'll walk in life. You'll walk in rest. You'll walk in trust. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's just pray before we go. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you. We receive it with gladness. We say thank you. Thank you for loving us enough to come again and again. Thank you. Lord, if there's places in our lives that's evil, just show us. Uh, even as we move forward, things that were habits, I thank you that even habits are, you're, you're, you're illuminating habits that have been open doors, uh, that, that they would just be shut, and oh, there would be just such great grace in the house, in your home, on your job, in your family, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. God bless you, and we will see you Wednesday night.